our boys and our oldest was just in elementary school that we were moving away from here and going to Wyoming. I want you to know he had what can only be described as a bawling, squalling, emotional breakdown. To make it worse, daddy's timing was horrible because we're on the way to the photographer to have our pictures made for the church directory. <laughs> that was dumb, wasn't it? Man, that was dumb. About five years later, we felt that God was moving us back close to home. He was older, middle school, understood a little bit more. Had a ball and a ball and a fit. <laughs> Costly. breakdown when we went from here to there. We were members here at Haven Heights. I was on staff. Marla worked in the family business. My boys sat with Grandma and Grandpa in church service. It didn't get much better than that. And we moved 1,400 miles away. It's kind of hard. See, up until that point, I, I understood about the cost to me. But it cost my family to follow Jesus. Now, I still know it's more costly to say no to Jesus. But when Jesus called Peter and said, follow me. Leave the boats, leave the fishing, follow Jesus. That's all he knew. But follow. Matter of fact, we, we see the question in verse 15 of John 21. Simon, son of John, do you love me more than thee? Now they've gone back fishing. Matter of fact, Simon says in verse 3 of chapter 21, looks at the other disciples and says, I'm going fishing. I don't think that was just a little relaxation bit. I think he's saying something like this. It's been a good three years. We've seen some exciting things. Now it's time to go back to our normal life. His normal life has been a fisherman. It's time to go back. To go back before Jesus. So when Jesus says, some of you love me more than these, I think he was pointing at his boats, in his home, maybe family, Simon, do you love me more than anything? If so, follow me. Regardless of your past, follow me regardless of the cost. I read about the Moravian Church in the early days had such a great impact on missions, and they had for many years as a symbol of their ministry an an ox, and on one side of the ox was an altar, and on the other side was a plow. 
and the word be ready for either. Just follow Jesus. And that means you got to plow, then go plow. If that means preaching behind the pulpit, preach behind the pulpit. If that means laying your life down as a sacrifice at the altar, lay your down as a sacrifice at the altar. But follow Jesus. <laughs> Regardless of what others do. Look on that. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. That last verse, though none go with me, I still will follow. Regardless of what anybody else does, follow Jesus. I read about a uh, kind of influential former minister, politician, uh, <coughs> whose college-age daughter came home from school and said, Daddy, God is calling me to Uganda. Okay, told her, said, Honey, don't you, no, it's, it's, it's dangerous. It's hard. It's costly. He said, he said I realized here was the problem. I had raised my daughter wanting her to be a respectable Christian, but not really a real Christian. And she was living out what it was to be a real Christian. And it's costly. Maybe nobody else is going, maybe nobody else is doing that, but follow Jesus. Jesus had a word was for Peter. Remember that we, if you read over in verse 20, Jesus says, Peter, follow me. So Peter turned around and saw the disciple Jesus loved. That was John. Following them, that disciple was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and asked, Lord, who is the one that's going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about him? Isn't that what we do all? Jesus says, follow me. Well, what about them? We're always worried about everybody else. Did you see what Jesus said? If I want him to remain until I come, what? Is that to you? You let me decide what I'm going to do with John. That has nothing to do with you. You just follow me. You follow me. Isn't it, isn't it amazing that God generally, usually, normally has a tailor-made plan for you that's not like anybody else's. Then I remember when I shared at the pastor's conference of the Concord Baptist Association. Pray for us. We're talking to a pulpit committee from the Yellowstone Baptist Church in Cody, Wyoming. It's a brand new church. They have nine attenders. And they have no building, and they have no money. And they want us to come to be their pastor. I'll forget one of the pastors in our association took me aside after that pastor conference and said, Don't you dare take your family out there. If you go out there and fail... Nobody here will pay to bring you and your family back, and you'll starve as a pastor. Don't you <coughs> dare be told to go. Well, see, here's what I do. That wasn't God's plan for him. It's God's plan for me. I 
fault under my not to be able to talk to that guy again. He's gone on to glory. And just tell him, you know, I remember the advice you gave me. I want you to know a couple of things. One is, there was somebody that would pay enough money to bring us back. And we went to war. And I tell him something else. We left Wyoming and had more money in the bank than we had ever had in our life. We purchased a house. The housing market went crazy. We sold it and made money. But see, he didn't know God's plan for me. He knew God's plan for him. But he didn't know God's plan for me. God says, follow me. You follow me. Well, what about them? Don't worry about them. You follow me. What if nobody else is going? You follow me. What if what I'm doing looks different than what everybody else is doing? That's okay. You follow me. What's that for you? The cross is torn down. Servants have come and scrubbed the pavement of the blood of Jesus. Tomb stands empty. Jesus ascends in the heaven to sit at the right hand of the Father. And he leaves this word, this command. You clear choice. We can follow Jesus or not follow Jesus. But we have a decision. We can follow Jesus or follow what we want. We can follow Jesus or we can do what everybody else is doing. But really, comes down, are you going to follow Jesus or not follow Jesus? I, I, I was very interested in the other day when I saw a little clip of one of the uh, women basketball coaches who in a press conference said, I don't know. He said, if you don't believe in God, you've got a problem. And she's been blasted. What about those who don't believe in God? You've just alienated the atheists and the agnostics and at a subsequent press conference, they asked her if she would like to issue an apology. And she said something like this. I'm paraphrasing. All I know is that everything I have is because of him. And I will not apologize. No apologies. Follow Jesus. What does that mean to follow Jesus? First of all, it means to follow Jesus in salvation. If you've never been saved, follow Jesus. You know, Jesus died for us as individuals. He also made it very clear he died. He laid down his life for the church. You know, there's only one organization, one group, one entity that God has commanded us to be a part of. He didn't command us to be Republicans or Democrats. He didn't command us to be a part of the Lions Club. He didn't command us to be members at the JCs. He did command us be a part of his church. Yeah. Remember, there's only one organization he's coming back for. 
He's not coming back for any of those others. He is coming back for his church. Follow me includes being a part of his church. Follow me includes what am I going to do with my life? Had a good friend. Went, was ready to preach close to the same time. But he had a very different <coughs> support system than I had. His father, Deacon, Baptist. When we went home, I said, God has called me to preach. I'm going to seminary, leaving my job. I'm going to seminary preparing for ministry. Dad will know why would you waste your life like that? No, no, I, I, that I don't even understand that. But that was his experience. His response was, I must follow Jesus. Hope you understand. You, you've taught me that. You know, we teach our kids that, don't we? We teach them to walk by faith and go where God calls them to go. And, but then when God calls them to do something hard, we're not quite so sure <laughs> that that's really what we meant. Follow me. Are you following Jesus? Will you start? Jesus, thank you for Easter. Thank you, Lord, for the cross and the empty tomb. And thank you for the call to follow you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I mean, you join me standing as we stand together and sing this.